All right, thanks, Tim. And I guess it's fitting that I, I follow uh, Steve, but I, I do feel he, he, he did me just a bit of a, a, a disservice earlier in his comments in his talk. I think he skipped the fact that I'm actually a citizen of two ex uh, overseas, UK overseas territories, not just the one. So anyway, I, I'm talking about the uh, Atlas of Living Australia's monitoring, evaluation, reporting, and improvement tool. And I, I, I have tried to signify with the authorship and the bolding that I'm just talking about work that some other people have done here. Uh, so I just want to make that clear. Beauty. Now, what this merit tool is, it's, it's an initiative that was done in collaboration with and on behalf of the Australian government. Uh, Department of Environment. This is something that directly is done to respond to government needs. That's it's trying to link biodiversity information with government investment and conservation activities, so that they could start monitoring the effect of their investment in certain areas. Looking at activities, people talk about you know what we're trying to do, but are, are, is actually what we're trying to do effective in terms of conservation? Where we're trying to link some of these activities up, so we can see that. And why do, you know, it comes back, I really like the science review. I think you guys have done a fantastic job with that. It comes back to addressing the questions of why do people want this GBIF-like data in the first place? And if you look at the contents and, and the various lists of contents, basically, you know, a lot of it is about, I think we probably all feel this in our hearts. It's really about this kind of, it's preserving and managing uh, sustainable environments into the future. This is what we want to do. This is This is what we really really buy into it, and we are all really excited about it, or this is why we're doing a lot of stuff. And we're not the only ones. The Australian government is investing quite heavily in this area of environmental sustainability. And just over the last five years, it's put about $2 billion into over uh, 750 different projects, various areas of, of natural resource management, conservation, these kind of activities. One of the problems that they've come to realize and are quite properly trying to address in a very positive manner is that these projects have been a bit uncoordinated. There's been no coordination of the information coming out of these projects. Uh, to some extent, the data management and standards have been left to the individual projects to kind of work out as they go forward. And the reporting mechanisms, the reports come back on these projects in a variety of ways but basically usually not with, with electronic data that's easy to pick up and, and share and for other people to use. So this is what they've kind of wanted to, a problem they've wanted to address. This is what we're responding to with this tool. It is the start of a journey. It's up, it's working, but it is the start of the journey. We're going to be refining it as we go forward. Uh, what this tool does is it allows grant recipients to record and upload data about what they're doing on a continual basis. They, they're just keep, keep, it it's, lets them keep going up. It, it enables online submission of reports and the reporting, and it's all in line with the Australian government standards around re reporting. It's, it's enhancing the reporting process by allowing simpler and yet more uh, comp complete uh, project and activity recordings, the variety of type of things we do. It's increasing information sharing within the NRM communities, the national resource management communities, and between them and the broader public. And because it's increasing this information sharing, it's enabling further research into the contributions and outcomes of, of this investment in Australian biodiversity conservation. So this is really responding to, to the government saying, we're putting a lot of money out there. Is it working? Is what we're doing actually working? How can we see if there's any effect? Uh, so. Again, like I say, measures the outputs and outcomes, supports government activities. It's cutting a lot of both red and green tape. It's providing tools. Not only is it taking these, this information, but it's providing tools for analysis and discovery both within and across projects. And it's providing some meaningful aggregation in terms of spatial and temporal consistency, consistency in terminology. OK, we have our Tadwick standards, but this is around the terminology of the conservation activities and it's providing forms of consistent data capture. Now, I don't want to really go on. I, I don't need, let's say I don't want to. I don't need to go on and explain to anyone in this room the value of aggregated data. The only thing I will add is, is surprises down at the bottom. And, and I, I think it's worth mentioning one of the things we've always felt with, with the Atlas ever since the first start is you know we're, we're getting something right 
when somebody we've never heard of comes in and does something we never thought of with the data. So that's one of the real values of, of coming in and aggregating data is you know you're getting it right when all of a sudden someone's, you're going, hey, look at what they did, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's something you never heard of or thought of it. So we like surprises. So this is what the tool looks like. I, I bottled out at the end and decided not to try and do this live, uh, so we're just going to uh, take a look at it. This is, this is the front page. This is what it looks like. You can see um, a map of Australia with lots of dots on it. There's about 750 projects, but there's more dots because actually projects have often more than one site involved with them. And you've got some filters on the left there. You can see there's filters by organization, state, management areas. You can start coming in and sorting and seeing what's in any given area, the type of projects that you have. So here, for example, I don't know if you can read this or not, but basically here, here's all the projects in this one management area, which is the South Australian Murray-Darling Basin projects. So we, first we cut in and we say this is just in this one area. We now filter that again with all the, uh, the invasive species projects in this area. And you can start coming in very quickly. You can look at what type of things are happening in any given area. And then you can sort through things and, and pick areas of interest or things that you want to do. This is the overall uh, higher level entry into the merit tool. So this is an aggregation of all the projects that are happening under, underneath it. Uh, rather than individual projects. So we can come to projects again. You can come here on the projects and you can start looking. There's, there's, you can see there's 780 projects or something here. So there's a great many projects and you can sort through and pick out individual ones if you wish to. But the dashboard then goes and lets you come through and take a look at summary statistics of the activities that have been taken place across any of the reporting themes. So you can see the reporting themes are things like biodiversity management, community engagement. Uh, I've, I've just taken one to say here's invasive species. So here's the invasive species for animals and you cut, excuse me, come in. And it just starts breaking down. So it's automatically breaking these down all the time in terms of, and uh, you won't be able to read it, but this is just what it looks like. If you go through and, and look at all these things, you can kind of see what kind of treatment's being involved for these animals, what's taking place, what are being treated, you know, what your targets are. So this is a kind of summary statistics that we get across all the projects. Now, any individual project will have a, its own little website its, or, or its own little spot where it does its project management. And all this project management is linked to what it said it's going to do in, in its project proposal, which ultimately gets funded. So they've said, we're going to do ABC, and now we're going to manage that, that doing of ABC through here. You can see that there's an approved funding of about $1.6 million for this project. This is the, the, the landing page for this project. And you can see there's, down on the bottom, there's room for pictures. This is one that, that each project can manage and do what they want with. And, you know, it's public facing. You can put as many pictures as you want. There's project documents. You've got room for news and events. Lots of things that you could do here to and, and very much personalize this. But then you can come in and start looking at other things. So here's your plans and reports tab. And this basically takes every project that was listed that you said you were going to do, every activity, and, and lists it there. Here's your action. You're supposed to have done it by a certain date. And in this case, they've all been finished. Uh, there are different type of projects. You got to get the launch. You got to get contracts out. All finished. Reports been uh, uh, approved, and and there it's done. Moving down, you know, stage one, stage two are all completed, finished. Now we're into stage three. This is the current stage that's going on, and you can see the projects are either planned or started. But as someone does something, they come in. They've said they're going to do it. They come in. They do it. They check it off. And, and that's all part of the approval process. And, it, it, you know, the government auditors can see it. Everyone can see it. It just makes it very easy for people to track these. We also have all the, uh, uh, the sites available here. So you can come into any given site that's being used in this project. You can pick one, for example. We're just going to pick one of the sites. You, you can't see it too well. It's that one. It doesn't highlight very well, but at this site, you can see this gives you information about this site. It tells you what it is. It gives you some information. It lists all the projects associated with this site, which is actually just, in this case, just this one, but there could be five or ten different projects associated with the same site if it's a national park or something. 
and it allows you to put share points up for the site, lists all the activities, in this case a weed treatment. These are all the kind of things that you could do. So it's kind of almost very complete uh, project management for this. One of the things you can now do with this site is you can view it in our spatial portal, which means you can actually go click, click that button there and you flick right into the Atlas spatial portal, which not only then lets you look at all the records that you've collected for this site, but all the records that anyone else in Australia has ever collected for that site and, and, and put them in there with, a, with analysis tools. And again, dashboard, these, this is fairly uninteresting because it's all around you know, single activities or something, but this is the idea of you have dashboard uh, for your project that you could go in and see how you're tracking. This is just another project uh, that I'm picking for, but again, lots of documents, news and events, highlights of upcoming activities, pictures. This has got some actual outputs. So you can see right at the top, there are some output targets that these people said they'd done. So on the right, that's a nice one. They said they were going to do 120 hectares of weed treatment. Well, they've already done 152. Bam, that project, they are. they've hit their target. On the left, they've just started, not so well yet, but they said they put in a 160,000 plants they were going to put in. They've only put 6,000 in, but you can track that. It's very easy for someone to come along and say, well, you said by this date you'd have that many in. That's how many are in. You know, it makes tracking these projects from a government standpoint very, very easy. Now, in order to enable and make this a bit easier for people to use it and a bit easier for people to use not only inputting data, but but in looking at things later, we have a lot of different activity-based forms. So there's 36 of them for covering a variety of activities that you would use in natural resource management or conservation, like biodiversity assessments. You can, you can read them. You can see what we're talking about here. These forms are consistent in terminology and standards. So this is just a home page for a demo project just to show what it'll look like. But if you go then now to the activities tab here, and you come up and this is the kind of things I was showing earlier. So you could just pick an activity from among here and say, let's, let's look at what this forms. These are just the sample forms. So here's a, a fire management form as an example. So a person's going to do some fire management in their area under their project. It could be controlled burns. It could be uh, whatever. But this gives you a chance to record that activity. It could be that this is an accidental burn, but you still want to know that in terms of understanding how your project is tracking that this has happened here. So this allows you to 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 record this activity. Let's see if I can no not working too well. Never mind. Uh, you can see you can choose your major theme. You've got a start date, an end date, whether it's uh, started or not. And you can come in and there's a lot of details. So your ignition source, if you hit that you drop it down. It could be lightning, it could be arson, it could be, you know, a, a, you know, someone just lighting it fire for a control burn, but it has lots of categories for your uh, ignition source, your, your, your type of event. Again, it could be a fire that got loose, it could be a control burn. It, it, it lists these, the reasons for the, for the burn. So you can see there's a lot of information here that about any given activity that you might include, and because there's a lot of information, it helps you compare how this activity is happening in, in different areas. If somebody's doing fire management in one area or another area, it, it actually starts comparing because, you know, before it's like, well, we've done fire management, what does that mean? Now you're starting to say, this is exactly what we mean by what, what, when we're talking about it here. Uh, we've got participant information. You can see number of participants. We, we actually record the number of indigenous participants, you know, as one of the metrics that we're using and, and want to report on in Australia. Uh, we can add photo points to anything. We, we can't add a photo point to this one, actually, because we haven't selected a site yet. But once you do, you can go in and add photos of what's happening, lots of pictures of, of everything that's going on. So this is just how we're starting to basically support the government's investment in biodiversity conservation so that they can see how it's going. Uh, it, and what this does is one of the things we found interesting is that in doing this, it, it's helping create a, uh, some new tools and functionality within the Atlas that other people want to use. So this, for example, is a group that we've worked for in, in the past, and they've done some. They have some uh, 
actually projects that fall in under this government funding, but they have other projects that doesn't. They've, they've gone and stuck all their projects in here because it's easier for them to see them and manage them. And other people are starting to come in and saying they want to do this. So how does merit help the government? How is what we're doing helping them? And this is really why we're doing it. It, it allows them to properly account for and promote the outcomes and achievements of their investment. You know, here's a lot of money. We spend a lot of money. Is it working? Helps them do that. We can aggregate and analyze data in any geographic context. And, and this helps us inform more targeted decision making. We're providing the ability for consistent time series data collection, which is going to enable landscape scale longitudinal change studies. Uh, I think this is very important. We're linking biodiversity and NRM outcomes so that people are going to save. If you go in and say, well, you know, you gave me a million bucks and, and I've done weed, weed removal in, in these parks. Well, so what? Has that made any difference to the biodiversity? Well, we're going to be able to find out because you're going to now be able to go in and record biodiversity information throughout this project. And hopefully what you'll see is as the activity increases, biodiversity increases. So this is, this is the kind of thing, but we're not going to be able to go in and target that and actually help people actually see if that's happening. We're improving, uh, providing improved data feeds into environmental accounting processes, something that certainly Australia is very interested in. And another thing that everyone seems to like is that we're, <coughs> data collection and analysis is going to be at lower cost and more efficient. So again, lots of features about merit. I'm not going to go into all them now. One of the key things is that it's, it, it's creating a stable platform for users that's independent of the current government or its policy. Governments change, uh, policies change, what you should or shouldn't be doing. The, these can change at a, every election. But what's happening here is that we're, this platform is going to be able to support projects no matter what they are. So just finally, uh, look, we've got a, a variety of things where Having created this tool, we're already looking at areas and, and talking to our Department of Environment about areas where we can f interact f better into the future because of this. You know, the idea of getting involved in uh, our, you know, some of the legislation or state of environment reporting. These are the kind of things we do. I think I, I think that a, a merit tool or you know something like a merit tool could actually work at an international level, being able to help monitor how we're doing against. Some of the things that have been talked about earlier, like the IHE targets, IPBES, and CBD reporting, you know, to actually see if there's ac people say we're doing this and it's improving things. Well, this actually helps people figure out if that's true or, or not. And finally, a final thought is like, you know, like I say, it's not done yet. It's a it's a work in progress. It will be refined as we go forward. But like everything else in the atlas, it is open infrastructure that is freely available for others to use. And as we move forward, as you've heard a couple of times, we're trying to make it easy for if people want to use the Atlas to, to take it in and, and put it into their own countries or regions. And hopefully as we go forward, this is just going to be one more component that's going to be part of that that the people will be able to use. So thank you. Thank you very much, John, and we're open for questions. Yes. Thank you, Patricia Colef Conavio. I'm really very impressed with this uh, tool. It seems it's fantastic. I just want to know how you are thinking to, to link it with the actual work in GBIF, because probably we need to have some tools to say to, to actually monitor if a species is not longer there. What are you, how are you imagining to link this with actual data we have? We, we're, we're actually uh, just at the point where we're ready to start that conversation rather than uh, having made any progress. This is one of these, it, it, it was actually quite an interesting project because basically they, they came to us just over a year ago uh, and you know, our, our financial year runs July to June, like many places, and they, they came to us, uh, you know, sometime at early June and said, we, we want to give you a bunch of money. 
contract has to be signed within a month, and and and, and you have to have deliverables by September. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, th a lot of this just happened very very quickly, and I think. In fact, I've got to say, I, you know, I'm not an informatics person, but I, I just really have to say it's just amazing how the Atlas team performed to, to meet this. It was, it was really quite impressive. But we're, we're kind of taking a breath now and able to take a breath. And I, I certainly think it's one of the things that we want to think of is how we perhaps can link this kind of thinking to do IT targets. It's certainly something we'll be talking to Donald and others in this room about. More questions? Yes. Oscar Rego from Colombia. This is not an, an exactly a question, but uh, this is a very, very nice application in the other level, trying to connect the biodiversity data management and the management of the biodiversity. So uh, I, I remember an application of the uh, World Bank they they show where are the different projects and uh, this is a, a comment for the community if we can connect those kinds of applications with the uh, gbf uh, network uh, it could be very interesting in order to maintaining our i mean our uh, use of the information mm. yeah. I agree Yes, and if you'd like to introduce yourself again, please. Uh, um, Andrea from Ministry of Science and Technology in Brazil. First, uh, I'd like to apologize because this jet lag is really killing me. It's, it's hard even to think. Uh, speaking is even worse. <laughs> so I'm not able to speak faster. And anyway, uh, uh, I'm very impressed with, with this because it's, that's we in Brazil, uh, we are working very hard also to build something just like this within the national infrastructure that we are creating besides working on a, a, a national database on species occurrence. This is very useful because uh, in Brazil we have a vi very difficult situation. Uh, uh, the Ministry of Environment is not the ministry that funds most of the research. Mm -hmm. Most of the research is funded by us. Ministry of... I, I, I think, I'm not sure if it's the same situation, but so... And so they really don't own most of the data that they need to do the, the environmental policies. So we are really trying to, <laughs> you know, find some way to integrate all this information. <laughs> and so every time um, the Ministry of Science and Technology wants, needs to decide how are we going to invest money on this year on, I mean, on, on on, on research, we actually are not being fed by the Minister of Environment on, on what is the information they need so we can fund that specific research. So, I mean, this is the, the, the need, it's the kind of thing that we really want to build within our national infrastructure. So, I want to talk to you, I mean, okay. apart from now, but uh, I'm curious about. Uh, where is most of the information that it's feeding an application like this? Where is it coming from? I mean, uh, what are the kind of integration channels that you 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 needed to build, and where from from where most of the information is coming to, to feed an well, application like this? Very simply, uh, mainly because I don't understand a lot of this stuff, so I have to simplify it. But basically. Most of the information is project-oriented, in this case around projects that have been supported by the Department of the Environment. So as a starting point, this is just capturing individual projects, and a project may, for example, say, this project, we're, what we're doing is we're going to fence off some area of bush, we're going to keep the, the rabbits out, we're going to then go in and we're going to do some weed treatment, and then we're going to go in and restore that bush and see the effect it has. So they would not only, they would then use this to report all their various treatments that they've done and their activities, but also be monitoring and just putting in the normal GBIF Atlas type of records around, well, we saw this many orchids here that day. So, so this kind of thing. So this is where it's coming from now. As 
a piece of infrastructure that, that builds on the Atlas infrastructure and then extends it, we, we see it's going to have a, a great many further uses as we move forward. So I, I'm happy to discuss this with you. Okay, and we just have time for yeah. one more question yeah, before the lunch break. Not really, it's just a, not a, really a question, but a suggestion of some sort, probably combined with a question. This is an important tool, I see, and I was wondering whether you can see it as a, a basis for mentoring a GBF, GBIF community, probably other, other participants can be mentored from, especially the use of the tool. And to me, I see it as a, 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 a means of building knowledge within the GBF community. How do you see it being possible? The, the, the simple answer is, uh, the, the philosophical answer is, yes, of course, we'd love to do this. Okay. Uh, it, it may take us a little while to be in the spot where we're really ready to uh, uh, download it and stuff and, and, and make it more available to people. And then understanding, we, we would have to, of course, work within certain parameters of how much training people want. Uh, you know, we can always knock off a workshop or two every year, but it's, it's not part of what... Uh, Let's just say it's not part of what a uh, huge part of what our government considers our core mission to be. So we, we're happy to do it. We do, we do a fair bit of it, but we, we just have to manage. It's like the budget envelopes. We have to all manage it within, within our existing resource envelope. But yes, I agree. I think it's something we should be doing. 